Borderlands has been a massive part of the gaming landscape since the first game came out back in 2009. Now, a decade later and with three numbered entries and a handful of spin-offs in the series, there's a wealth of great DLC that expands the Borderlands universe, including the upcoming Bounty of Blood, A Fistful of Redemption. We've gone through every campaign DLC for the Borderlands series and have come up with the top 10 Borderlands DLC of all time. First up on our Borderlands DLC countdown is one of the most recent expansions, coming out at the end of 2019 as an add-on for Borderlands 3, featuring a very Borderlands-y take on the classic heist movie formula. It has you infiltrating the casino previously owned by Handsome Jack, and once that old familiar Borderlands gameplay rhythm hits, it hits right. This bite-sized Headhunters Pack seasonal-themed DLC has you guiding your favorite Borderlands 2 Vault Hunter to the snowy wonderland of Ginger Tent. It's a non-denominational winter celebration with excellent humor and a hard-rocking holiday-inspired boss fight soundtrack. The rewards are a little sparse compared to other DLC, but the joy of the holidays made up for it. The, right chick. the first campaign DLC for Borderlands 2 didn't offer much in the way of refreshingly new content, but it didn't really have to. It was basically just more Borderlands 2, and that's all we wanted anyways. While its story and enemies weren't terribly exciting, it was a great excuse to hunt loot and introduce new raid bosses and the Seraph Crystal's currency used to buy powerful new Seraph weapons. A callback to the boss of the Secret Armory of General Knox, one of the original game's best DLC packs, more on that later, the fifth and final Headhunter DLC for Borderlands 2 is another bite-sized expansion with a chomp-sized boss fight. It does a nice job at finishing up the Headhunter packs, but it's the promise of rare loot with each Son of Cromorak's victory that gives this DLC a spot on this list. In this, the first campaign expansion for the first Borderlands way back in 2009, Gearbox took us on a journey to the zombie island of Dr. Ned. And what a journey it was. After a surprising success, people were hungry for more Borderlands, and a zombie island delivered, bringing new quests, enemies, and of course, that sweet, sweet loot, all in a fun Halloween wrapper that helped set it apart from the main storylines. He rallied his fellow Claptraps and turned them against their corporate masters. Claptrap is one of the most endearingly <laughs> obnoxious creatures in all of video games, and this expansion for the original Borderlands treats the Claptrap line of annoying robots with the respect they deserve, which is none. <laughs> Essentially a drawn-out riff on the ending of the original Borderlands, Claptrap's new robot revolution has some of the best humor Borderlands has to offer, and ultimately gives fans exactly what they want outside of a hilarious plot. A chance to grind some levels, loot, and gain a few more skill points while you're at it. Hands down the best of the original Borderlands DLC, not only does the secret armory of General Knox add even more of the great Borderlands lootin' and shootin' gameplay loop to an already amazing game, it's one of the funniest pieces of content for an already hilarious series. On top of that, General Knox bumped up the level cap to 61 and provided a new level of weapon rarity, the coveted Pearlescent, a level of loot that stood atop all others until the release of Commander Lilith and the fight for Sanctuary almost a decade later. This is Lilith. Sanctuary is under attack. All civilians evacuate the city immediately. The final piece of Borderlands 2 DLC, Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary, could have just easily phoned it in. As it primarily exists to set the stage for Borderlands 3 and released five years after the last Borderlands 2 DLC. Instead, Gearbox crammed a great story, hilarious dialogue, and a new effervescent rarity level to weapons in a story update nearly seven years after the base game released. You don't want to hear about that, Vault Hunter! I tore it! 
And I'm here to ask you one question, and one question only. Explosions! It's not long into Mr. Torque's campaign of carnage before you find yourself in the badass crater of Badassitude. And that's all the information you need to know that this is an excellent and delightful DLC. It's loaded with explosions, constant and frenetic battles, and wave-based arena fights where blood and loot rain from the heavens. Let me tell you about the assault on Dragon Keep. Tiny Tina's assault on Dragon Keep takes the RPG elements inherent to the Borderlands formula and goes all in. And we mean all in. The entire DLC is set in the fictional Bunkers and Badasses tabletop RPG universe, with Tiny Tina serving as DM. The loot might not be as desirable as other expansions, but the writing, story, gameplay, and sheer imagination put this squarely at the top of the heap when it comes to Borderland DLC. And that's it for now. Be sure to let us know in the comments below what your favorite Borderlands DLC add-on or expansion was. And of course, for everything else video games, make sure to stick with IGN.